Good evening, America. Welcome to Cross Country. We begin tonight in Philadelphia, where the president gave the first rally cry of his 2024 re-election bid. We've got a fight in our hands. And my question to you is simple. Are you with me in this fight? So the president sure does have a fight on his hands, but he's fighting his own track record. His administration has been plagued by crisis after crisis, from inflation to the border, from crime to national security. But what happens when you press the president on any difficult issues? Why did I ask such a dumb question? What a stupid son of a Shush up, okay? Thank you. You didn't listen to either, so why should I even answer the question? Why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. Calm down. So here on Cross Country, there's no such thing as a stupid question. So we gave folks in Philly a chance to ask Joe Biden one of their own. Watch. If you had one question to ask the president, what would it be? One, I'd say, why don't you sit down and just have an interview and explain all the things that you've done since you've taken office. How does he think he's going to uh, lower inflation? When is there going to be caps on renting? I guess I would probably ask about just the general debt climate is, you know, how high the American debt is right now. It's the highest it's ever been. Well, Mr. President, please help the homeless. Please. That's the one question I ask you, and please do something about it. Student loan relief. How come that's not happening? How about that? What is he going to do for people that have already paid off their college debt and spent thousands of dollars paying it off? My question is, when are you leaving? Get out. <laughs> Stop destroying our country. Do you really think it's a good idea to run again? What would you ask the president of the United States? Can I have ice cream with you? <laughs> That's a kid. Uh, joining me now, New York Post columnist Ricky Schlott and former New York State Senator Democrat David Carlucci. Um, thanks so much for joining the program. David, no president wants to a answer questions, especially when the approval rating is down, uh, multiple issues going on. But the president, you don't think he's going to be able to stay in the basement this time, right? He's going to have to get out there and talk with the American people. No more COVID. He's going to have to do that. There's no question about it. And to see that response uh, that President Biden gave those reporters, it's not professional. It's not presidential. Um, and that's one of the things that I, I'm disappointed that the president did that because he has a reputation of not doing that. He is usually having good candor. He's open and treats the media with respect and, and dignity that they deserve. And you, you juxtapose that to our previous president, where it was a very hostile environment with the media. So I think President Biden knows better and he has to show himself different than being this real confrontational president that we saw with President Trump. So to see that, I think it's just a slip up. It gets the best of us sometimes when you're you know, really on edge, but the president's got to do better and he's got to show himself to be presidential and professional at the same time. Ricky, was it just a slip up or are we seeing multiple moments of the president not really liking the tough questions? I mean, mm -hmm. none of the politicians do, but he was supposed to be different. Yeah, I mean, I would say he just ended a speech by saying, God save the queen, man, completely inexplicably. And I think <laughs> the older that he gets, the more it seems pretty obvious that his age is creeping up on him. Mm -hmm. And maybe he it's not that he's even taking issue with the questions themselves, but that he's just not as much with it. And it's mm -hmm. not an ageist thing to say, to acknowledge that his age is clearly c catching up with him. You know, Bernie Sanders is the same age, and I think he's with it. I don't mm -hmm. like his politics, but, you know, I, I, it, this is why Gen Z has the biggest drop of approval rating of any generation of President Biden, because it's just not resonating with young people to have someone who's clearly not totally home I'm, in the I'm, White House. I'm so glad that you cited Generation Z, because there's some polling data that I want to go to that talks about uh, us worrying about the future of America. This is the new Fox News polling out there, and it's 88% of people that uh, we interviewed said they are worried about the future, but also inflation and higher prices. 90% of folks were concerned about that, as well as higher, higher crime rates, 81%. These are kitchen table issues. Uh, I was really shocked about people saying the future of America. That means the debt, um, the, 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 what the country once stood for. People are concerned about that, David, yeah, the pres uh, preservation of the country. Yeah, and, and what's really interesting with some of that, those surveys, it showed that 
Republicans and Democrats are very similar in terms of values, but they believe that the other party is different from them, don't mm -hmm. share the same values. And I think that's something that we have to fight to overcome, to say, where can we come together and instead of where can we differ? And the politics today, it's, it's more, it's like, it's not campaigning, it's been camp complaining. And there's a difference. It shouldn't so just David, be all about complaining. Where is the separation? Okay, because you're right. Th that polling does suggest that the Republicans and Democrats are aligned on this issue. But when you look at elected Democrats, so let's just take crime as an example. It seems like the DAs have been lax on crime. When you have the people, Democrats and Republicans, saying, actually, crime is a major issue for us. So why the difference in the way they execute the policy? Well, I think it's depending. I mean, there's thousands of DAs across the country, and we can cherry pick a few. But our major and, cities. Our major cities. So I, I think it's about that enforcement is equal across the line, and that's what they're looking for. But I think what's ultimately going to solve some of these problems is that we get away from the personal attacks. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, Biden is sleepy, or Trump is horrible in this. It's like, let's attack the policy, not the person. And that'll help us bridge to the next, you know, next century in terms of the issues that have to be addressed. But as long as we keep attacking each other, and that's what that's what sells, that's what you know gets the, the, the clicks on, on social media. But let's go after the policy and not the person. And I'm hopeful as the 24 campaign really heats up that the media will will stay on that. Really push people on the policy and not all this personal drama. What say you, Ricky? Is there any candidate that is focusing on the policy for the American people? You know, I think that there is a disincentive in our, our current political structure to be moderate and to actually speak to the middle because our primary systems here in New York are totally closed and independents and Republicans really have no say. And so these politicians are really incentivized to tack as far left as possible in order to win that primary election. And then, you know, a Republican never stands a chance here. And so I think that part of our system kind of stacks against that moderation that I think we both value and we both want. But unfortunately today it's more it's more profitable and it's more expedient to to exacerbate the differences rather than our common humanity and our American like friendship that we should all have with one another. So well said Ricky David, thanks so much for joining me. Hey Sean Hannity here. Hey click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.